friends welcome back to physiology series of 2019 apgt question paper so let us discuss fifth question from physiology so here is the question blood pressure is defined as the product of option a is cardiac output into peripheral resistance option b is systolic pressure into pulse rate option c is diastolic pressure into pulse rate and option d is pulse pressure into pulse rate so first of all let us see the definition of blood pressure so blood pressure is nothing but it is a pressure exerted by column of blood on the walls of artery so it is a pressure exerted by column of blood on the walls of arteries and there are certain important components for the blood pressure that we should know so there are four components that you should know about blood pressure one is systolic pressure second one is diastolic pressure third one is pulse pressure and fourth one is mean arterial pressure now what is the systolic pressure systolic pressure is the maximum pressure exer exerted in arteries during systole systole is nothing but it is a contraction phase of cardiac cycle so we know cardiac cycle has systolic phase and diastolic phase so systolic phase is a contraction phase of the art so at this time the maximum pressure exerted in the arteries is known as systolic pressure so what is the normal systolic pressure normal systolic pressure is 120 mm of hg and what is next one is diastolic pressure so when systolic systolic pressure is the maximum pressure then our diastolic pressure is the minimum pressure so minimum pressure exerted in the arteries during the diastolic phase that is during the relaxation phase so what is the normal diastolic pressure the normal diastolic pressure is 80 mm of hg and next one is pulse pressure it is the difference between systolic pressure and diastolic pressure so normal pulse pressure is 40 mm of hg that is 120 minus 80 mm of hg that is systolic pressure minus diastolic pressure and next one is mean arterial pressure so as we know mean means the average so average pressure existing in the arteries during the cardiac cycle or during the cardiac output so what is the normal mean arterial pressure it is the diastolic pressure plus one third of pulse pressure to determine the mean arterial pressure we have to add diastolic pressure plus one third of pulse pressure now what is the normal mean arterial pressure so normal mean arterial pressure is 90 mm of hg so that's it so mean arterial pressure is nothing but the average pressure existing in the arteries during the time of cardiac output and it is calculated by or it is determined by diastolic pressure plus one third of pulse pressure so normal mean arterial pressure is equal to 90 mm of hg so now we are familiar with systolic pressure diastolic pressure pulse pressure and mean arterial pressure now let us see what are the factors that are affecting bp we have central factors and peripheral factors so under central factors we have cardiac output and heart rate so the peripheral factors include peripheral resistance, blood volume, elasticity of blood vessels, velocity of blood flow, diameter of blood flow and viscosity of blood flow. So these are the factors that determine BP. If there is any difference or any changes within this, it affects the BP. So it may the BP may go high or the BP may go down. Now let us see some of the points related to, the, to this factors because this determines the BP and you should know the basic points regarding each one of this so cardiac output what will happen if the cardiac output go up or when the cardiac output is more so the blood when the blood volume is increased the cardiac output will go high along with that the bp will also go high if the cardiac output is reduced the patient may have reduced bp so when an anemic patient come up with a reduced bp you have to think of that the patient's cardiac output is low that means the patient's blood volume is also low when the patient's is having anemia that means that the patient's blood volume is less along with that cardiac output is less so the patient is complaining of low bp and again heart rate when the heart rate is high that means cardiac output is high so the bp will go up now next point is peripheral resistance so what is this peripheral resistance so any work again is the blood flow in the artery so any work that is done again is the blood flow in the arteries cause any problem within the peripheral resistance so if there is any problem within the peripheral resistance again the bp will go high or there will be the bp will go down so peripheral resistance also also an important factor that determine blood pressure next one is the elasticity of the blood vessels so the blood vessels has its own capacity to increase its elasticity or decrease its elasticity that mainly it concerns with the width of the blood vessels so the elasticity also determine 
the BP. Next one is velocity of blood flow. As the if the velocity is more, that means the cardiac output is more. If the cardiac output is more, blood volume is more. So the BP may go high. Next one is the diameter of the blood flow. That also determine the BP and viscosity of the blood flow. Viscosity is nothing but it is the thickness of the blood flow. If the protein content or albumin content in the blood which determine the uh, viscosity, if it is high, the viscosity will go high. So what happens here? Again, BP will go high. So if the blood gets thicker, the BP will be raised. So that these are the important factors that determine the blood pressure. So next one is how the blood pressure is regulated or the regulation of blood pressure. So this part is actually important for for our competitive examination. You should know who, what is what are these mechanisms that are included in the regulation of blood pressure. So the normal mechanism of BP is under control of hypothalamus. So our vasomotor center is situated in hypothalamus. So next one is renal mechanism. Renal mechanism include renin angiotensin mechanism. When the BP goes down, renin will be re released from the gesta glomerular apparatus from our kidney. So it helps in maintaining the blood pressure. Next one is hormone mechan hormonal mechanism. So there are certain hormones which helps in maintaining blood pressure and which include sympathetic and parasympathetic pathways in that adrenaline, noradrenaline are the important hormones that helps in the regulation of blood pressure which helps in vasoconstriction, vasodilatation etc. And again some local factors also helps in the regulation of blood pressure. So these are the important points that you should keep in mind when you read blood pressure. So let us see the question again. Blood pressure is defined as the product of A cardiac output into peripheral resistance, B systolic pressure into pulse rate, C is diastolic pressure into pulse rate, D is pulse pressure into pulse rate. So when we so we learned about diastolic pressure, we learned about systolic pressure, etc. So this peripheral resistance is the one of the important factor that that uh, maintain the blood pressure and even cardiac output. So this is the product of blood pressure is nothing but it is the product of cardiac output into peripheral resistance. So when you read blood pressure see that you should read cardiac output and cardiac cycle. So the duration of cardiac cycle is very very important this point 8 second you see and see that you should read the different stages of diastole and systole which include isometric contraction, isometric relaxation, protodiastole etc. These are some of the important or high yield topics from that of cardiovascular system. So that's it about cardiovascular system or blood pressure. See you again with another question from that of physiology. Thank you all.